Lazio of the world, welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. I'm Vittorio Campanile and today we have to talk about that incredible performance of last Saturday, Lazio Verona, or better, Verona Lazio. Another incredible performance from Lazio. I'll just finish your hot coffee because it's very cold here in Rome. And it's getting colder looking the table and Lazio performance. I mean, we were hoping that these games, easy games, would bring Lazio back on the top four, but instead we have collapsing more than ever right yeah i don't know what's uh more disappointing whether it's the results we're getting in these games against lower table teams or if it's that the games themselves are often really boring as well so it feels like you lose a lot of your life watching verona lazio because for about 70 minutes nothing happened apart from a very, very nice goal from Zakanya, which is probably the best goal we've crafted all season, maybe. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's just, it was completely lifeless for too long in that game. And we've, well, we've got more to talk about again, but yet another bad result. And this time on a weekend where a good result really would have helped with all the other teams kind of playing against each other. So, yeah. yeah. And it's the theme of the last three weeks, because even... Two weeks ago, we were saying, you know, you beat Salernitana, there are a lot of teams fighting each other. So you get points, you recover points, you can be fourth in uh, in just a couple of weeks. Instead, things are not going that way. Again, this week, there was Roma Fiorentina, Napoli, Juventus Napoli. So you, you could get the chance to take points back. And uh, yes, Milan lost, so we gained one point against Milan. Napoli lost, we gained one point. But it doesn't really move the table one point, right? You needed three points. And if you don't win against Verona, let's maybe people are not aware. The only game Verona won this season was in August against Roma, right? So since August, they didn't win a game. This wasn't Real Madrid, right? No, I mean, they have, you know, shown signs of improvement recently. And this this match, there was obviously the context of it being a special occasion for them and they they filled the stadium, which doesn't happen all that often. So I think it, it was a bigger day for them than just a normal a normal uh, Lazio game. But still, it doesn't really matter. I mean, for from the perspective of Lazio, again, um, you know, as as you were famously quoted recently, apparently on on a Danish TV, Vittorio, um, this is not Real Madrid. <laughs> it's not Real Madrid. And, not even uh, Real Madrid, yeah. I mean, I, th I think that it's been interesting in the last couple of days seeing that the the papers have slightly been moving on from talking about the same thing all over again, which is bad results against bad teams. And now it's become more about Lazio's um, throwing away leads and now having given away 10 points from winning positions this season. Um which is interesting because it's almost like everyone's so bored of talking about Lazio playing badly in these kind of games that we found <laughs> a new kind of depressing statistic to focus on. But that is a worrying one, isn't it? I mean, what do you think is going on there? I don't know. I, I think this team gets really scared. I'm, if you don't close these games, they're always going to have another chance. And I think this team is scared because they already did it once, right? We already lost against Lecce at the start of the season. So they know things can happen. And in the last 10, 15 minutes, they're really so freak out that they can make mistakes. And uh, this mistake costs us point. It happened against Salernitana. It was happening. Let's not forget against Cagliari. Provedel made an unbelievable save. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have won. And on Saturday, Provedel makes a mistake and uh, we don't win the game. This is what happened. The team is so afraid of dropping points against small team that we keep doing it and it's funny enough because i think this team is so scared that against small team we 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 concede stupid things against big team we have nothing to lose because you know if you lose against inter it's it's inter everybody expects you to lose if you lose against napoli it's napoli you know you you're not the favorite so you play without fear because you have nothing to lose when you play against salernitana Everybody expecting three points. And so this team is afraid of losing. And that's what happened. Um, 
I, it was funny because an Italian journalist said, well, the answer is not, not don't take the lead because we drop so many points. You have to win the game. So, I mean, at a certain point, you have to lead, right? <laughs> or, or you score the last <laughs> second or, or you have to take the lead eventually. So this is That's... not the answer to the problem. I'm no tactical mastermind, but that sounds like terrible advice to me. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I and, hope you're not giving the team talk before the Inter game this weekend. <laughs> and, and Alistair, we have to point out another thing, because after the game, Sari said, hey, this was just an unlucky episode. We dominated the game. We had 70% of ball possession, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we didn't deserve to lose the game, to draw the game, etc. I'm not, I'm not, I don't agree with Maurizio Sarri. Uh, yes, 70% of ball possession, but how many times do we pass the ball backwards instead of forward? That ball possession is useless if yeah. you don't create chances. Again, we didn't create chances. Go and watch Montipo. He makes one good save and the ball is going out, the one on Luis Alberto. That's it. 70% of ball possession for nothing. And... I mean, if you don't dominate the game against Verona, who's bottom of the table, I mean, against who you're going to dominate the game? Against Lega Pro team? You and Serie A. You're going to play only against Serie A team. So I don't agree with Maurizio Sarri. Uh, this game was terrible, as you were mentioning. This team needs to create far more chances than we did on Saturday. Yeah, and I guess that all comes down to your own definition of domination. And it is slightly, it's a slightly worrying insight into Sadi's mentality that he does see that as domination. Because what what is what is more dominating, having 73% possession in a game and two shots on target, or having 40% possession but creating 10 really good chances? It's probably the latter. Because ultimately, what counts is what, what you're managing to create in the final third. And that's been a constant problem for Lazio this season. And talking about the possession thing, an interesting thing I've seen this morning was that uh, Lazio have, are averaging more passes per shot than any other team in Serie A. That's not a huge surprise at all, but I think that does help kind of statistically explain what the problem is here. They are, like you say, having far too many kind of unadventurous passes backwards sideways possession for the sake of possession without really getting anywhere there aren't enough players in this team taking risks it's something i've talked about with isaacson before recently that i liked about him was that he was a player who was willing to just get the ball into dangerous areas and try things i thought actually yesterday the only player who was really doing that was pellegrini who only came on for the last five minutes and okay, again, it's the same thing I was saying about Isaacson. It's not going to come off every time. <laughs> but that doesn't really matter. He's, Pellegrini came on for five minutes and chucked about four or five crosses into the box. None of them come to anything. But at least he's trying something. The rest of the time, we're just in, in possession outside the Verona box. They've got 10 players behind the ball, and they're just passing it from side to side and then losing it. And I, th I think that that statistic is is slightly damning because they just need to find a way of being more direct when they need to be or just i don't know <laughs> finding a new way to attack because it does feel a bit like smacking your head off a brick wall here because they keep trying to do it the same way and it's not working uh, i don't agree with pellegrini can i be very honest he Go said he, he said well i've been on the bench for 10 games I want to play more. You come in against Verona, first cross, you hit the, the defender on his face. Second cross, you pass it to Montipo. Third cross, you send it in the stands. I mean, you are a Serie A player. Three cross like that, they are wasted. Yeah, and... but my point is more that he's at least trying to do something. Rather, if that's Marisic or Husay, they run up the left. If they get that far, they turn around and they pass it back to midfield. And, 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 that's... and look how Verona score their goal. Their goal is from Ngon hitting a terrible cross. That is how that goal happens. It's a bad cross. It's supposed to go to Henri, doesn't reach him. Providel drops it and they score. So, I mean, I'm not saying that's like a strategy that anyone should use, just trying to force errors, but it just goes to show that there is value in kind of 
being more direct or being more kind of you know just simplifying things a bit sometimes yeah yeah the thing that gets me more angry about saturday but it's not only saturday is what you were mentioning we were getting up and then you know marusic or even luis alberto when do see instead of going forward they simply stop turn back and pass the ball back to our defender i mean i can do 99 percent of ball possession like this playing against anybody I just pass the ball backwards every single time. Uh, you're not going to score a lot of goals like that. Um, honestly, I thought Zakani had a decent game. I was surprised to see him starting because he just got back from injury. But I thought Zakani was one of the few players trying to dribble pass sometimes, and he did it. But again, we have to shot on target. I, I repeat, Montipo pretty much didn't do nothing in 95 minutes uh that's not acceptable for me dominance is a game where or you win or the other goalkeepers man of the match i mean you have 70 minutes of ball possession 70 percent of ball possession you have to have seven eight shot on target so if that eight shot on target doesn't transform in two three goals then multiple has to be man of the match instead we never hot hit the target we had like five go shots going wide and that's it that's not enough probably our best chances castellano is man of the match he said he made he made an incredible save on vecino right that that's the biggest <laughs> chance we have and that's the biggest save they made right so for a tatty yeah i mean you know you've got 15 minutes to get a win against one of the worst teams in the league who are down to 10 men, you should be doing more than creating that one good opportunity, which was Vecino's one. Alberto's one, I don't think really counts because it's it's that kind of hitting it from outside the box in desperation because nothing else is on and it was going wide anyway, like you say. Um, and I don't know, I mean, the, the thing that concerns me is that we're almost exactly halfway through the season now. You know, this team's played a good, what, 23, 24 games, something between all competitions. And we're not seeing any improvement with this situation. You know, there's there's been flashes of, okay, maybe this can help. Maybe we change the midfield, maybe using the wing backs differently, maybe rotating the strikers to keep them fresh. We've, we've talked about everything that's happened so far this season. And there's nothing really that is, that is con resulted in a kind of constant uh, threat in front of the goal. Um, and I think the longer it goes on, probably the easier it is for teams to prepare to play against Lazio because they can now look at um, but how, how to frustrate them. Now, now, the thing I was thinking on Saturday, why didn't you bring in Kamada? Because I thought Luis Alberto wasn't doing nothing special, to be honest with you. I thought, and this is not the first time, I think in the last month and a half with a better performance have been dropping and still he finished the game i can understand you want to keep your best player on the pitch but if he's performing like that give kamada a chance you have a very good player who maybe wants to step up and prove everybody that he's a good player if you don't give him a chance against verona in that situation when he's gonna have a chance yeah um but I, again I'd, I'd find it hard to believe given what we've seen so far that you know that's going to be the thing that changes everything i don't well, know i mean i think the the problem with you know it, it sari is is a great coach don't get me wrong but the issue with having a, a coach who is so tactically inflexible in terms of the way they set their team up is that once you come across a big issue like this that's going on for a long time, and I think it's something he's found at previous clubs as well, you know, people do get frustrated by that because they want to see um, something kind of obvious and clear that is being done to try and inject something different into this, this team. And often people think that has to be a change of formation. I don't think it does necessarily have to be a change no. of formation, but it, it probably has to be you know, a, a change of either selection or a change of the way the team is being asked to play. And like I said, 
that's the thing that's kind of frustrates me at the moment is that they're not changing their style particularly. Um, and so the results aren't changing. And now we've got Atletico Madrid and Inter coming up this week. So. Yeah, yeah, not easy. But I want to point out something because last year struggling in away games, last game we won away was the 21st of October, Sassuolo Lazio 2 0. After that, Lazio got, I think, one point because we lost against Feyenoord, we lost against Bologna, we lost against Salernitana, and we got one point against Verona. So, why are we struggling so badly in the away games? Home, we weren't amazing, but I think, except the Derby, we won all the home games. Well, I think that has to probably be tied into the same um, the same discussion that's been going on all season, led by Sari himself, around the team's approach to games um, and its mentality. And I think if there's an issue with that, with the players, which Sari says there is, that is far more likely to be seen in away games than home games because they don't have that external um, factor to motivate them, to give them the obvious push that they need to remind them of their you know, responsibilities and the, to, to start fast. And I was thinking that in the, you know, since we last spoke, the general game in the Coppa Italia has happened as well. And look, decent 1 0 win against a decent side into the next round. It's good. But when Guendouzi scores that goal, I was thinking, God, how many early goals have we scored this season? It doesn't seem like something that's happening. I might be completely wrong about this, but I just can't really remember Lazio starting games fast very often. And it was kind of like this, I thought, in the Verona match, where even one, I mean, before as well, but even once that goal's been scored, there's this kind of sleepiness to everything. <laughs> and that is always such a risk when it's uh, a one goal game. You can't allow it to become a sleepy match. And Lazio you're really struggling to kind of kill off games. And perhaps that's an issue in away games too, is that maybe they're seeing a, a one goal lead away from home as being something very valuable let's hold on to this rather than let's kill this game and let's are not killing games this season it's strange because we are like an allegri team only with sari manager which doesn't make sense right i mean i was i think juventus in the last eight games won all of them except the inter game where they drew for one goal I mean, 2-1, two, 2-1, one, 1-0. Two, one, one, two. So they're very good in that. We are simply not. So we have to do something. We have to score two goals because otherwise we, we really struggle. And the fact is that when we concede goals, we don't win. The last time we did was Lazio Atalanta, 8th of October. So we're that, going... That was there last season though, wasn't it? Yeah, that, the, that was the, pro the 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 difference was last season Lazio found that ridiculous run of twenty two clean sheets. I mean, and that is clearly not sustainable because that's a club record. That's a crazy anomaly of a season. But that problem was already there before, wasn't it? Yes, but uh, you cannot pretend to never concede to an opponent, right? You have to score at least to go especially against Verona I mean the, the the table is it's incredible Lazio played 15 games we score 16 we allow we concede 16 I mean that's in a, we are the worst one of the worst defense of the top 10 teams and one of the worst attack of the first 10 teams of Serie A I mean it, it, it it's incredible we have bad every <laughs> Attacking and defending. I have to say, there is there is something quite comical about seeing you getting really exasperated and annoyed while you're wearing that jumper. <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> I love it, but it's a very fun-loving jumper, and you're getting very annoyed while wearing it. It's 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 a big contrast. Um, yeah, no, you're right. You're right, and uh, that's <laughs> the. 
the, the team was never going to be able to rely on repeating that kind of defensive record. And look, they've been a lot better recently. And the defensive record in the last couple of months has been has been uh, really good in comparison to any team's standards. But that needs to be balanced better. And this is what we've been talking about all along. It's The balance has been probably started too, too far on the other side and they're conceding too many goals. And we were saying at the start of the season, what's happened to that defence? What's happened to the team that kept clean sheets? And then the problem is, once that team returns, the uh, the attack completely dries up. So I don't know if this is something that, that can be resolved in January. This is the thing is that at the moment, inevitably, there's all these uh, stories starting to appear about various players, Lorenzo Insigne or whoever, kind of being brought in to, to add more to the attack. But I just can't see how one one or two kind of new players is just going to suddenly change everything. Because like I say, I don't think the issue is so much um, the talent of the players we got. It's just that the way they're playing together isn't working. So We, we have to point out something. Uh, this year, we are conceding very stupid goals. I mean, the one against Verona, mistake from Provedel, let's be honest. He saved us against Cagliari, but Saturday, he makes a mistake. He's surprised, whatever you want, but... Yeah, go Question. on. Is that the first time you've seen a player score against Lazio with his testicles? <laughs> I didn't notice that. Um... <laughs> he basically humped the ball into the net. It was quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, but we... stupid goal against Verona. Stupid goal against Salernitana. I mean, I wouldn't say... I would say around 50% of the goal we consider this year are our mistakes. So this is where we have a problem in defense. Too many gifts from Lazio. And we're getting close to Christmas, but there's still plenty of time. So, you know, you should have waited for all this Christmas gift. On the other side, we are not creating that much. And don't know what's going on with Felipe Anderson. He's really struggling. We got finally uh, Zakani back on good shape, at least for the first half on Saturday. We had Lazzari that was playing unbelievably well, but we need to capitalize. And uh, I don't know, sobbing Chiro Saturday probably was a mistake. He wasn't playing great, but when Castellanos came in, he missed so many chances that I'm getting a little bit disappointed with the player. Yeah, he is fast becoming someone who's... Yeah, he's he's kind of developed that reputation by now. And that's a shame. I think he needs to feel the support. And we hope by now that he would have kind of unblocked the goals a little bit. But it's not just him, obviously. I think it's just there's more attention on him because of the shirt that he wears. Um, Anderson, the I saw some comments from Sari that I think they're from before the game, actually. But he was basically saying what well, what we kind of all know that you know, Anderson's a player who's has has ups and downs, and his issue has always been finding consistency. And last season, he found a really good run of that, and this season, not so much. Well, and I was thinking, yeah, but <laughs> you're still playing him in every single game. I mean, you have just admitted that he is not in good form and he's not playing well, but he will still play every match. I mean, I don't think this is the time to go Anderson bashing because his is assist for that goal is really good and he's at least setting up goals this season even if he's not scoring many he is i think our biggest creator in the team um, can, can i say something that made me laugh a little bit yesterday Ottastat was celebrating dibala saying he made six assists this season unbelievable in less half season he made the same assist of last year felipe anderson who's playing dreadful has <laughs> made one assist less than the Dybala, and they are celebrating Dybala, and we are saying uh, Felipe Anderson is playing badly. I mean, this is so funny for me. I'm, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think there's an, uh, an, a conspiracy, an anti Lazio Opta account. Probably. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, I mean, Felipe Anderson, another assist. And again, I think we all agree he didn't play as we were hoping for, but still, he made an assist. So I think that's the reason why he's playing all the game. Plus, let's not forget, Isaacsen was out and 
Pedro, I don't think he has 90 minutes. He can come in and decide the game in the last few minutes. And apart from them, we have Kamada, the, that is the, the third option, the second option now as a winger. Well, it looks like um, the Alberto, Rovella and Guendouzi midfield is pretty set now, though. I mean, there is at least a bit of consistency mm -hmm. happening there. but Which I think it's a problem, Alessio, because if you go and check the last games, Pedro scored, Chiro scored, Chiro, 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 Chiro. Last time a midfielder score, if we don't count Coppa Italia, and I'm not counting Coppa Italia, it's a solo Lazio. So we're talking about end of October. So it's more than a month that a midfielder doesn't score. Or mm. if you want to put it differently, it's more than a month that only Chiro and Pedro are scoring pretty much. All, all the attackers are scoring. The rest of the team isn't. That's a problem. Yeah, I mean, we, we just need more goals from everywhere, really. Yeah. Um, it would have been nice if that Kazali one had counted just so that we could have a a nice free corner goal, which doesn't happen all that often. Um, yes, I don't I'm know. I'm going to you on this. But, you know, this is this is another thing, I guess. If, if the team isn't working, it's kind of like Roma last season. The team was so, so lacking creativity in open play but they scored so many goals from set pieces from corners and free kicks because that's something Mourinho works really hard on and that's kind of like a case of controlling the controllables you know if you've if you've got a set piece and you are well drilled and you know how to do it you will get some rewards from that um and that's something that's you it feels like we're not scoring enough goals from open play so at least should we be doing better from set pieces than we are um and that's not particularly happening. No. But then again, we're not really built for that because the team doesn't have um, exactly a kind of towering uh, array of giants. Um, I mean, there's a there's a few, but I don't know. I think maybe something do, a bit more inventive do, needs to be going on there. Do you think the club underestimate the the absence of Milinko Savage? Surely not. I mean, everyone knew how important he was. I think that maybe um, there's been a little bit of kind of revisionism going on where now people are are starting to say a little bit, oh, we shouldn't have bought in eight new players. We should have bought in like two or three really good players instead. And I, I just can't agree. OK, in retrospect, you might look at it now and say, OK, maybe that that would have been sensible. But there's no way we can really look at it that way because we were asking, <laughs> pleading for more squad depth for ages. And the squad depth definitely has improved. So it's just that that influx of new players has created a bit of confusion and disconnection in the team of not really knowing who's who deserves to be playing where. Um, and although it was last year, we're a bit predictable when Sergei was there for a while, the team picked itself. But then again, the players in the, in that team and having Sergei in that midfield, the reason he picked himself was that he was just on another level. Um, so I don't know. I think that it's not a case of Lazio lose uh, Sergei and make those signings, and now this is Lazio's level. I don't agree with that. I don't think those changes suddenly make Lazio the 10th best team in Serie A. I don't think we were the second best team in Serie A, really last season, even though finished second. But they should be doing better than they are um, with the squad that they've got. And clearly the team would be better with Sergei, but I don't think it's suddenly uh, a much, much worse squad without him. No, I think we are struggling. We need to score more goals. And uh, at the moment, we, we are really struggling to create chances. And I think... What is missing more is Milinkovic was, and it's strange because he's like a freestyle player sometimes, but he's the one that close to the goal points more, try to finish it instead of Luis Alberto, who maybe wants to do, you know, the, the back heel uh, to serve Chile Mobile and so on. We need to score. And it looks like some of our players are not convinced. They want to score only beauties. Which yeah. 
you know, I, I can understand because Zakanji's goal was amazing. But at the end of the day, you need to win games. I think that the thing that they've struggled with is that Sergei occupied so much attention. Like teams really had to plan for what they were going to do about him. And so when you had those two threats in midfield at the same time, in Alberto and Sergei, it was causing all sorts of problems and issues and creating space for others. Whereas now, I don't think teams will be looking at Guendouzi and thinking, right, we need to come up with a plan on how we stop Guendouzi. I mean, maybe Genoa should have done that, but <laughs> you know, I'm not. That's that's not a criticism of Guendouzi. He just doesn't offer the same uh, threat in an attacking sense that someone like Milinkovic Savic, alongside someone like Alberto, did. And Alberto's space has probably been restricted a bit more since Sergei left because he's getting more attention on him because he is the threat in midfield that Lazio have now. I don't know. I think uh, maybe we were expecting more from uh, from Guendouzi that we still didn't see, especially uh, when we need to attack. Again, I think... But no one thought he was going to come and score loads of goals, did they? That wasn't the expectation. I don't think we were expecting 10 goals from Guendouzi, but 4-5, something like that, with a, a couple of assists as well. The other thing, I was I was thinking we were expecting more from Kamada. And again, if he doesn't play Saturday when Luis Alberto is not playing great, I, I mean, is he going to play against Inter? Are we talking about that? I don't think so. Uh, again, we need to take chances. And Kamada probably, especially when you're 1-0 against Verona, and 10 minutes is missing you have to take your chances right um i understand that sadi doesn't agree doesn't think that putting four strikers is gonna work he tried against Lecce and it was bad but maybe in, put a more defense offensive mind midfield adding camada to Luis Alberto. and i mean let's be honest losing right, that game again We've tried that, though. That's what I mean. I feel like we've tried all this stuff already. And nothing but stuck. not recently. Not recently. I mean, if we lose against Verona, I mean, a draw, a defeat is not a big difference, right? Let's try and win it. Well, look, I mean, I think that looking ahead a bit, what we do know now, for sure... I mean, amazingly, the Champions League race still isn't over because the uh, it yeah. really should be by now, considering how poor Lazio have been. But it just isn't because of how congested that part of the table is. But the Champions League itself has to be, for me, the big priority. Like, all the physical and mental energy you've got, mm -hmm. none of it should be saved for these games, including the game on Tuesday. And I know we're both through. But there is a massive difference in the Champions League between finishing second and first in your group uh, and the chances that gives you of reaching a quarterfinal. And let's not forget what that means, not just in terms of prestige and excitement and everything that's good about being a fan and having your team in the Champions League. I think Lazio got something like 10 million just for reaching the last 16. So financially, the benefits are massive of just continuing as far as you possibly can. And so that's a big game. And... Like you said right at the start, the weird thing about this team is you wouldn't be that surprised if they go to Madrid and actually put in a pretty good performance because they are capable of doing that. That's the, the kind of maddening thing this season. I mean, to wrap it up, I think this team has nothing to lose against big team. And we are good. Luis Alberto is a great player. Felipe Anderson can be a very good player and so on. So if you lose against Atletico Madrid in Madrid, it's not a disgrace, right? It's, you know, a lot of team lost there and a lot of team will lose there. So if Lazio lose against Atletico Madrid, obviously, a, a point, some, it's different if you lose 6-1. But don't think it's crossing fingers. Don't think this will happen. But this team is afraid to lose against Cagliari, to lose against Salernitana, because there is, that is the game you should be winning. And so, if you don't close the game, it happens like it happened Saturday, etc. Uh, I mean, we won away against Napoli. <laughs> Let's not forget about that. Yes, it's not the best Napoli ever, but it's still a very good team. We won away against Sassuolo. You know, another decent team, etc. So, we can win away games when we're focused. The problem is, this team is very afraid when we're favourite. 
And you can see it, even against Kayer at home, that was a dreadful game. We won it because, I don't want to say we were lucky, but we didn't play that great. So it, it's crazy enough to say it's easier for Lazio to beat Inter rather than beat Verona away. Well, we'll see. Um, the record's been not bad in that fixture, at home especially, and against Inzaghi. So, but I mean, they look unbelievable at the moment, Inter. So, I'm not sure I agree with that, but I, I, I do agree with the sense of what you're saying. The spirit of what you're saying is definitely true. Well, well, the last two games at home against Inter, 3-1, 3-1. The, the last two games away against Verona, I think we lost both, right? So... <laughs> This is what the numbers are saying. We didn't lose on Saturday. All right. It might have felt like it, but a point's a point. Yeah. Maybe it's <laughs> Scotland. Uh, I'm going to surprise you on this because you touch a little bit of the Casale goal. I thought the referee made the right decision, unfortunately. Whoa. I thought he made other terrible decisions, but on that, Casale is an idiot for me. It's too. Yeah, it's, very, it's very obvious, isn't it? It's uh, don't push it like that. I yeah. mean, try to hide it a little bit. Boom! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good signals, right? Hey, I'm pushing it, ref. It was as subtle as a Romelu Lukaku slide tackle. Yeah. Now I don't want to talk about Roma, but people saying that wasn't a red card. It was the reddest card i've seen I mean, for a long time i mean i can understand you're a roma fan and <laughs> conspiracy it's incredible anyway uh thanks again everybody for listening we're gonna be back next monday if alers uh, is finding what he's looking for and uh let's hope that we are gonna talk about two positive games for lazio right alistair big week yeah let's see let's see Again, again. Well, you know, we were talking that we had a good fixture and things gone bad. So let's hope when we play big teams, things go better. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare of a season. Uh, thanks, Alistair. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks to our patron. We couldn't do it without you. And if you like the podcast, rate and review. And if you want to become a member, uh, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Membership starts at $2 a month. Thank you again. Cheers.